Hey everybody, this is the Be Better Golf Channel. I am in, where am I? What, what, where, what part of the country is this? You're in Ladysmith, Virginia, which is just south of Fredericksburg and just north of Richmond. And we, which is basically condense that all down to almost the middle of nowhere, especially for a person <laughs> from Long Beach area. So uh, I think here. you had a bad. I had to row all the way from Cuba to get here. <laughs> That's true. So uh, this is Bobby Lopez. Bobby is a PGA professional and a great golf teacher. And uh, Bobby, tell us a little bit about your history in golf. How did you even get into playing golf? And well, I got lucky because uh, when I was about nine, ten years old, I wanted to be a catcher. You know, like everybody else, playing little league baseball. Yeah. And they built a little uh, public golf course near my house. Okay. And lucky enough, I just went and played by myself a bunch of times. My mother, her the doctor she worked for, gave him a set of clubs to give me, and they were yeah. wooden shafts, irons. And I had a Louise Suggs three wood with the whipping falling off, you know, the, the, yeah. the and that's all I had, see. Yeah. But then one day the pro drove up in a cart on the third hole at Lejeune Golf Course in Miami. And I thought I was in trouble. I went, holy crap, they're gonna throw me off. <laughs> yeah, right. And he said, put your sticks on the cart. And he sort of took me under his wing. And, oh, and cool. if it wasn't for him, Vince Allen was his name. If it wasn't for him, there's no way I would have played golf because I was poor. And you know, he would let me do stuff like rake all the bunkers on the course and let me play. Yeah. Then he gave me a job, uh, 25 bucks a week to pick up all the balls on the range, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, during the summertime when school was out. So I got lucky, you know, to be able to play this game because so that's how you got into it. And then you, uh, you're, a, you're a teaching pro now, but at, at one point you were playing for money. You were playing golf. The European money. tour in the 70s. Okay, how'd that go? Meet a lot of- I'm here now. And... <laughs> right. I went to a lot of bars. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> I had a great time. No, I was lucky enough to play with a lot of the great players. I mean, I roomed with Seve for a month. We argued almost every night. Uh, his brother Manolo was a really nice guy. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the Spanish players were really a lot better than people thought. Mm -hmm. Manolo Pinero, Valentin Barrios, I could name off a bunch of them. And uh, and like now you have Jimenez. Mm -hmm. He was hitting balls right next to Gene. You know, I go out to yeah. see Gene Sowers all the time, help him out. And I started making fun of his shoes. <laughs> Oh, two, two. He managed. Yeah, yeah, I told him. I said, "Look at those zapatos. Look at those zapatos. Some zapatos about a viejo." I said, "It's yeah. the shoes for old people." Yeah. And and he says, "Yeah, but jeans got plastic on his feet." Yeah. And he says, "Yeah." And we started, you know. That's great. That's funny. I, I fool around. I mean, that's you can't be so serious. It's only a golf tournament. So if yeah. somebody if somebody's uh, brand new to to you and your instruction, right? And imagine somebody else, not you, was describing the Bobby Lopez kind of philosophy of right how the golf swing works. Condensed, kind of, how would you say that? Oh, I can do that real short. I take out my iPad or big screen TV, as you see over there, and I stop the swing right in the right spot that goes, you see that crap you're doing right there? Yeah. <laughs> That's why the ball does this. Oh, okay. We get rid of that, we get rid of that. So cause and effect. It's cause and effect. I mean, yeah. that's all it is. Mm -hmm. And some things you can't get rid of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, just like Dustin Johnson, you know, shut at the top, like Butch said, if you got rid of that, he wouldn't be able to play. Right. And I can walk up and down the, the senior stores more the guys I know because I'm a senior myself. Yeah. But you can see, look at look at Jimenez. Look at his backswing. It's a mess. Yeah. Sorry, Jimenez, but it's a mess. Yeah. But if he can manage it, so what? The ball's not going to complain. Now, a lot of the stuff that that you see that that uh, you talk about in your amazing uh, swing analysis videos is you talk about there's this line here and golf is played back here. Yes. And I see a lot of golfers going left. Offside. And try, yeah, you call it offside. Right. Tell, tell me about, it's almost like if it was a medical thing, it'd be like a, a contagious disease that's spread everywhere in golf. <laughs> so you see everyone going over here. Because the target's out here. So how do, how do people fight that urge to want to go? Well, you did it in every other sport. In tennis, yeah. you went like this, bang. Yeah. Baseball, you went like this. Yeah. You know, so you, football, you stepped here and then you threw it. Mm -hmm. The problem is the golf swing's probably more akin to like the discus throw. Okay, yeah. Or a, a, a shot put, you know, where you're here like this, boom. Yeah. You don't lean forward this way before you throw the shot put. Right. So it's done on a tilt this way. Yeah. See, so it's here, boom, and it's a rotary motion. Mm -hmm. Hurricanes go around, tornadoes go around, electric motors go around. They don't go side to side. Yeah, right, right. None of that. I tell people, I say, do the twist, not the mambo. Okay. They're doing the mambo. Yeah, right, right, just sliding. Right. Yeah. Okay, to get us going, I did, uh, I did ask for some questions on, on Instagram, BB underscore golf show. So let's go to Instagram and, and let's uh, see what people wanted to ask Bobby. I feel like I'm in the national debate here or something, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. There's questions from Facebook. <laughs> yeah, oh gosh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, let's go. It's a lady golfer, says so she's got lots of kids that want to play golf. Mm -hmm. Said, how many kids you got? She said, 13. 
I said, I like my cigar too, but I take it out once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is, a, this is a question I think is really common for, for golfers. And uh, I'd be interested to hear what you have to say about it. Okay, somebody's asking, how do you avoid, or the best way to avoid, getting stuck on the downswing? You see a lot of, especially like early extension, like humping the goat, things like that. Like people feel like their golf swing gets stuck behind them. I think that comes, you know, so much I see is perception. Yeah. When I watch, start a lesson with somebody, I say, what are you trying to do? Yeah. Tell me what you're trying to do. And what they think they're doing and what they're actually doing can be two completely different things. Yeah. But I got to understand in their brain what it is they think they're doing. Okay. And usually if you get somebody that's doing this kind of motion like this and yeah. getting trapped, they'll say, oh, well, I was told I had to start the downswing with my left hip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was told to drive with my legs. Mm -hmm. Now, you listen, this is, the, this is the one I love. I've got it at home. In fact, it's on our website. They were doing an interview with Jack Nicholas. And it was one of these, this is your life, Jack Nicholas thing. And the guy says, Mr. Nicholas, do you attribute your great success to your tremendous leg drive? You know what he said? No. He said, oh, I always heard that from people about my leg drive, my leg drive. I never felt like I used my legs. My key actually was, I felt like I had to get the club to the ball before the buttons in my shirt got there. And years and years, people were going, oh, Nicholas, the legs, I got to do this, I got to do this. Yeah. For what? It's funny because if you see pictures of a 23-year-old Jack Nicholas or... They, they, they always look, look at how his, the tree trunks of his legs, yeah, are, big legs. are stretching his, his pants out and uh, how much he's using them. But you don't know until you're inside someone's mind really what they're, they're firing with. Yeah, he said that he felt like his bigger legs gave him a better stable environment to be able to swing his arms harder from. That's the, the uh, next thing I want to ask you, Bobby, is when, when you talk about um, the things that create speed in the golf swing, and uh, the legs, a lot of people think that this driving and hip motion is going to give a lot of power. Are the legs really adding that much power to, to the, and speed to the swing? Or are they more just there to stabilize you so that your upper body can give the power? What do you think? Well, I've come to one conclusion over time. Okay. That I've seen guys, I say, there's no way, and girls, you say, there's no way this guy's going to hit it out of a shadow. And they kill it. Yeah. Then you see other guys that are huge, they're big, they're strong, and they can't hit it out of the shadow. Yeah. It's the same thing with a baseball pitcher. Why is it that one baseball pitcher can throw at 100 miles an hour, the other one throwing 82? Yeah. They're doing the same motion. They might be doing the same things. They might be thinking the same things. But it's a God-given talent. You know, some okay. people have a God-given talent for, for swinging the club fast. Creating and speed. some of it mm -hmm. is just physical strength. But I think bottom line is the club's hooked to your arms. If your arms aren't going faster and the release isn't going faster in the hands, the club can't go faster. You can't make it go faster by wiggling your legs back and forth. Right. Let's in fact, it. we take a launch monitor, yeah. and we've done this test before where I take my feet and put them like this and then hit a shot and actually make the, the club head speed go up. It'll actually go higher. So taking the legs completely, completely out, out of, of it, it for people is right? making it go higher. We actually made it go higher. Now, how fast would the club go if they took the upper body out of it and only swung with the legs? And you're done. Yeah, I mean, you'd just be doing this and <laughs> yeah. yeah, nothing. You know, because if you so. tied yourself to a chair and you went like this to throw the ball, it would just go down into the ground. It's. So you're saying that the lower body's role in the golf swing, if you had to, to explain the, it's more of a, uh, it's more of a support system and less of a power creation system. Look at McElroy. System. He hardly moves from the waist down. Mm -hmm. I show that video all the time when I'm well, doing People lessons. with McElroy always see that, that double hip thing he does. Yeah, you but You know, they that, think that's, yeah, that's making some kind of towel snap. It might. But, yeah. It might. It might be helping. But the thing is, you have to find something that you can do. Yeah. You got to find something that you can repeat because if you can't repeat it, who cares? You say, well, so-and-so does the double wiggle. Well, big deal. Yeah. You know, maybe... Uh, you'll see another player doesn't use his legs at all. The guy kills it. Yeah. But he's got really fast hands or really fast arms. You've got to figure out what it is you do well. And it might not be length. What about Fred Funk? He doesn't hit it very far. Yeah. Look at Corey Pavin. Won the U.S. Open. He can't mm. hit it out of his shadow. Yeah. So you, long, length isn't everything. Yeah, long, long career. This is the strategic yeah. game. You've got to move the ball around the obstacle course. And what you need is good predictability and great management. That's what I like about John, uh, um, Jim Furyk. Yeah. He's a great manager. He manages himself. He manages what decisions he makes. He manages very well. And that's what, you, that's what it takes to be a good player, I think. Let's move on to the next one. I think kind of similar to, or kind of related to being stuck and going too far left, somebody's asking the best fix 
for the uh, chicken wing. So my understanding of that is, you know. That. Oh, I'll tell you where the chicken wing comes from. But right now, I got to tell you, there's some good looking girls that are going to start taking it off. Shut <laughs> right. that thing off. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, no, the chicken wing comes from being off sides. Yeah. Period. If, let me find so you a show me of off sides just right. in, in case people. Right. If I'm here, boom. If I rotate from here and extend, there's no way that I can have a chicken wing. Yeah. The chicken wing comes from, yes. I move in front of it. Now, I don't have any room. I run out of room. The only thing I can do once I get here is this, yeah. which you see a lot of people do. They jump. Mm -hmm. But they're trying to jump up and get it square at the last second because Charlie DeLuca in Miami, you can look him up. Uh, great guy, great guy. I've known since I was a little kid. He used to have a big, big mat like on a fence. Yeah. And he would have people do this. Boom. Man. Yeah. Boom. And square the club up because if you were here, you can't square the club up. It's going to be like this. Yep. Unless you flip. Mm -hmm. So, so the the chicken wing is kind of a protective move of your body when you're here. It's you a have byproduct. To, yeah, it's a byproduct. You yeah. don't fix the chicken wing. You fix what's causing the chicken wing. Because if you keep doing what you were doing and you don't chicken wing, you're going to hit it six inches fat. You might. You might. Or hurt yourself. <laughs> this is a riot. You should try this. <laughs> yeah. Somebody is saying. And this might be kind of a lot. A lot of people seem to have you. you I'm sure you see this. Golfers all, all seem to have very similar problems. The, all the questions that I get about uh, golf, they all kind of seem to tie together. You know, it seems like a lot of people are struggling with so, such. We're not building stuff. a rocket to the moon. We're just hitting a golf ball. Right. This is the easy part, hitting the ball. I hate to tell you. That's the, yeah. easy, the hard part is learning how to play. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, how to score. Right. Okay, uh, Matt from England is asking, how to extend through the ball better? And uh, let's just go with that one for now. How okay. to extend through the ball? Yeah, it's kind well, of a chicken wing kind of thing, right? Yeah, yeah, it goes right back to what I was saying earlier. Once you get here, see, here's the motion. If I set, watch this. Yeah. Once I set at the top, I'm really taking that position and I'm just rotating and not moving my hands or arms one bit. And look where I end up. Mm -hmm. There's no conscious weight shift. No. Okay. Chichi Rodriguez. Yeah. I went to see him because I do a golf trick shot show. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Paul Hahn Jr., who used to help me out, said, go watch Chichi one day when he does a clinic because he's a riot. Yeah. If you get a chance to see Chini, Chichi, if he's still around doing anything anymore. But anyway, uh, he did this little gag and everything. And then afterwards, he had questions from the peanut gallery and one of them said hey where do you transfer your weight on the golf swing Chi Chi and he said no there is no weight transfer in the golf swing and the whole crowd went ooh like that uh, he says no he says if I wanted to go higher I sort of stay on my right foot if I wanted to go lower I get a little bit on my left foot but it's a turn it's not a shift yeah see it's here and now it's a turn it's a turn and yeah. release it's not a hmm mm. yeah so similar to what we were talking about with the upper body and lower body, the weight shift is a result more than something you're putting into the it. The club takes you to your left foot. Yeah. Watch. I go here. Mm -hmm. Here comes Mr. Centrifugal Force. Zoom, 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 zoom. And I whip it like this, and I let it go, and it pulls me. Yeah. You're not spinning it here and then going this way and then trying to get it well, Because, look, yeah. if you got to have a center point, and as soon as you start moving it sideways like this, and this is the center point, so the more this goes like this, the slower it's going to go. Okay. The more it goes this way, the faster it's going to go. Like Hogan said in his book, he's got a piece of rubber hooked to his pants, and then it snaps him back to the wall. Yeah. yeah exactly. That's the feeling. Awesome. That's the feeling. Okay, guys. Uh, so on the next, uh, thank you so much, Bobby, for joining me. On the next episode, which we're going to film in about five seconds, uh, Bobby is going to look at my swing. You guys are really familiar with some of my faults, and they're very similar to some of your faults. So we're going to look at, at my swing and um, get into a kind of some faults and fixes that I think is really going to help everybody out. Hey, I want to tell everybody, uh, how can people learn more about you and how to get in contact with you? Quickfixgolf.com. Quickfixgolf. Bobby uh, will uh, does swing analysis. Uh, Swing analyses, I guess you would say. Yeah, do a free analysis online. Just take your uh -huh. take your, your iPhone out or whatever and take a video of your swing, attach it as an email, send it to me, no charge. That is absolutely the best value in golf instruction, a free analysis from this amazing teacher. Get involved with that. And then you can learn more about him at Quick Fix Golf. He also has a YouTube channel, which is linked below. Become a subscribe to Bobby's YouTube. It's really, really great content on there. You'll even see me on there in one of the videos. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, tune in for the next one. Hasta luego!
upgrade. Yeah, you did good, man. You did good. Oh, thank you, thank you. You're you the man. Good. Golf is hard. This stuff is simple. <laughs> Hey everybody, thanks for watching through to this point. I really appreciate you guys watching the videos and also being involved with the channel. It's been a ton of fun. I wanted to take this opportunity after that Bobby Lopez kind of Be Better Golf Live video. I wanted to take this chance to give you a channel update about what has been shot for the channel. Also get your input about what you would like to see coming up sooner rather than later. And then also let you guys know about the things that I have planned. So. When I was there in Virginia, I originally went out to Virginia to play in that golf tournament that you guys saw some vlogs from that my nephew and I won. But I took the chance to go out and see Bobby and you guys saw the first video from that. And I spent the entire day with Bobby and I got a lot of great content. Let me know what you would like to see next. Uh, Bobby and I on the range did a video. With, it's a lesson with me, but it's really about uh, this huge problem people have about going left in their golf swings. So. It, it's all about keeping from going left and that lunge target word that so many people are doing, unfortunately. But we really get to the bottom of it, and it's a really amazing video. I also talked to Bobby uh, about working the ball. We did a short video on that. Did a, a what's in the bag with Bobby, and then also did a four-hole on the course playing vlog, Bobby versus I really interesting a lot of fun obviously because anything with bobby is a ton of fun so a lot of fun and uh some good insight and then bobby while we were on the course there he did kind of a pop instruction with uh there was a major a guy out there who hit a major slice and bobby had this really cool insight about fixing the slice and he kind of fixes it pop just right on the spot there another thing that i did with bobby is we recorded this really long in-depth segment about power that's pa that's going to be part of this uh, documentary that I'm making here on Be Better Golf that's all about, I don't know what it's going to be called, but it's all about the source of power and where power in the body really is generated. In about 10 days, I'm going to be flying to Mississippi to interview Tony Lutzek on that same topic, and I also interviewed Monty already. Uh, flying to Mississippi for the channel, it represents the biggest investment by far that I've made in the channel. And, uh, you know, everything that goes into flying somewhere else and staying somewhere else. But um, I really wanted to do it, even though uh, Tony is a, a lesser known instructor, in the YouTube world anyway. Uh, I really wanted to fly out and talk to Tony because of what he's done with... Uh, Jeff Flagg converting him from a minor league baseball player and an incredible athlete into having this amazing, really enviable golf swing and winning the World Long Drive Championship just uh, two years ago. So I wanted to talk to Tony about where power is created because he really is unapologetic about his ideas of how power is kind of loaded up and how it's released. And it really completely changed my thinking about how not only to create power, but also how to create the most consistent strike. So in this video about power that's going to be coming up, I'm going to try to put up some snippets from it soon. Bobby, Tony, and Monty are all really on the same page. And I wanted to put them into this documentary for Be Better Golf because I really think that... Um, it's kind of a hard sell for people to change their idea about how power is actually created and where speed is actually coming from. So it's uh, super exciting. And uh, send me an email if you guys want to see more about that. And I will would love to uh, share some of it with you. So I just wanted to give you guys that update of what's to be shot and what's been shot and get your feedback about what you would like to see next. The winter's coming up really soon, and uh, unfortunately, for a lot of you, it's going to be uh, putting golf on hold, but anybody who's a fan of this channel, really golf never really goes on hold, and that's why I want to come, that's why I'm coming out with this power DVD this time of year, is because the winter is an amazing opportunity to really change our sequence and get it, um, do a lot of swings into a net, into a... Uh, just dry swings where we can really take the time away from worrying about our score to actually make changes that are 
really needed if you're going to get to that next level. If you want to be the best golfer that you can be, just practice your short game, be an amazing putter, be an amazing chipper. But if you want to be better than you really, you re, better than you can be, if you want to be on another level, that's when you really have to address some of those underlying issues you might have with how you're creating your power and how you're, you're swing is sequenced. First of all, it takes an understanding of what you should be trying to do. All right, this went on way longer than I thought it should have. But um, once I start talking about golf, I just keep going and going. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Be sure to subscribe because a lot of this new stuff that's coming out is going to, uh, it gets hidden by YouTube. So you won't see it unless you're a subscriber. So hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate it. And uh, look forward to a lot of more stuff coming out. Bye.